So tonight's talk is uh, related to the blog that I wrote, which I'm sure all of you guys have read multiple times since we sent it out this afternoon. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, make sure that you check your email, check your spam, whatever, and tell Catherine if you didn't get it. So this idea came to me because I'm doing this, uh, what is the, the thing called? National... National November... National Novel Writing Month. National Novel Writing Month. Great. Is that a different thing from what you're doing? It's November. I'm doing November Okay. Well, I'm doing national. <laughs> right. Anyway. Uh, it's... it's uh, I, I really love writing. And I thought, this is something that I don't do enough of. I do, I do too much of some stuff, like watching TV and uh, sleeping on weekends, I guess. And not enough of some stuff that I think is really important, like writing. So I thought, I'm going to do this this month. And I'm writing every day. And some days I write as much as you're supposed to, which is like 1,600 words or something. And some days I don't quite make it. Most days I don't quite make it. But I'm still writing every day, and it's really fun. And uh, as I was writing, I'm, I'm writing my memoirs, which is kind of silly at, at, at 36 to be writing your memoirs. But it's something, it's basically just like what I know, which is about myself and martial arts. So this one's about myself, because I'm too scared to write the martial arts book. That one I'm going to have to wait till I'm like 80 years old, and then, then you'll get the really good stuff. But this, uh, I found myself writing about uh, choking. So when I was a kid, I used to, I used to choke like... I literally could not take pills because I guess one time I went to take a pill and I like gagged on it. And so then every time it was time to take a pill and it could be the tiniest, I mean like a half of a little round Advil I could not take. And it's because I saw it and I went, I'm going to choke on this thing. And sure enough, I, you know, I would, I would put it in my mouth, try to swallow it with water and I would just gag on it. And, and it was super disturbing for me and my family. <laughs> And I wrote in the blog about, you know, these other times that I, that I choked. Um, I'll just tell you guys, it's a gross story, but whatever. I was, I was at a Chinese restaurant with my family. I was in middle school. I was probably like 10 years old or something. And we had, we had ordered this, uh, this like sp spicy beef, like long strips of beef. And I still to this day just don't chew my food enough. I'm just too excited about eating. So I just like wolf my food down. And I was doing that then and I, and I ended up with like this half chewed piece of beef that I started swallowing and half of it stayed in my mouth and the other half was going down my throat and I started gagging and, and, and choking in front of the whole restaurant. And it went on for, for what seemed to me to be like, you know, five minutes, it was probably 30 seconds. but. It was, everyone was staring at me, and I thought I was dying, and, and there was nothing to be done. It's not like you do, you know, CPR or the Heimlich Maneuver when it's just like half of a piece of beef. I mean, I could still breathe, but I was just freaking out. And then finally, I ended up, I, I don't remember if I coughed it up or swallowed it, but I, I finished, I concluded the piece of, the piece of beef. And... The, the waiter came over, and the way that they, that they handled this was to give us a new bowl of the same stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to eat a whole other bowl of the same stuff that I couldn't eat the first time. But as I was thinking about this, it, it, the, the, the thought came to mind, like, this is a pretty good analogy for what choking is, and I'm, and I'm not going to spend an entire meditation talk discussing uh, choking on food. This is a talk about uh, mentally choking, uh, you know, the, the kind of indecisiveness or like we, we get up to this uh, difficult decision or this split second kind of action that we need to take and we get stopped, we, we choke. And this analogy of the half-eaten strip of beef is, is great because I didn't fully commit to chewing it, I didn't fully commit to swallowing it, and it would have been fine if I had swallowed it or if I had spat it out, but I ended up with like halfway, and I was choking. Because this, this uh, commitment versus non-commitment is a really kind of uncomfortable thing that ends up getting us stuck. And I wrote in the blog about the, the part of Karate Kid when Miyagi-sensei says to daniel son about, daniel sons like, I want to do the tournament, but I don't know, like, should I practice karate or should I, should I not? I'm not sure what I should do. 
And, and Miyagi says, walk on one side of road, okay. Walk on the other side of road, okay. Walk in the middle, squish like a grape. And that's what happens if you walk down the middle of the road out here. You know, even in this traffic, a car will hit you. Uh, you have to choose. I'm doing it or I'm not doing it. You know, I'm, I'm committed to this or I'm committed to this, which might be committed to not doing it. Great. But if we are kind of waffling in this back and forth space, this in-between, then, uh, I mean, in martial arts, you're just never going to get it. And in the moment of practice, you could you could get hurt. You know, uh, there's this week we've been working on getting out of the way of a stick, and so the stick's coming at you, and I know that this is what goes on in your head, especially if this is newer for you, because I still remember doing this. Uh, the stick's coming, and I'm like, uh, should I go right or should I go left? I don't know. And then you get hit with a stick. We're using padded sticks for those of you guys who are watching. Uh, don't call the police. But you have to commit. And honestly, like, yeah, it's ideal if you step to your partner's back. But if you step to the front, at least you didn't get hit. And you have to commit to doing something. And on another level, not committing is its own decision. It's a bad decision if you are, if you are uh, non-committal to either one. Because you're making this decision essentially to stand right here and get hit. So... We have that kind of moment-by-moment uh, moment way that we practice this. And this is related to the, the state of mind that we're in. Because if we're trying to think our way through practice, we'll never move fast enough. If we're trying to anticipate you know, which way that they're going to be swinging at us, we're not going to be able to get it right more than 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, you're just getting hit with a stick. So we want to be able to keep this uh, open state of mind, what we call mushin, where you are basically like a clean slate, and then whatever happens, you're able to respond to it immediately. Uh, when you get the opportunity to practice that, you want to practice it. Catch yourself trying to think your way through th things because that's a bad habit to get into. You're just reinforcing the same way that you've always been doing things. And we spend all day long in that logical place with our brain where we're thinking we, this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And your martial arts practice is an opportunity to take a break from that. This is not the time or the place for you to be up in your head uh, thinking, um, anticipating, guessing. This is a time for you to just be. And... If you think about what life must have been like, you know, thousands of years ago, we didn't have so many choices available to us. So this process would have been a lot easier. We were not in this place where, you know, we're in Baskin Robbins choosing between one of 31 flavors. This is, we're not in a place where we're stuck in traffic and we're thinking, well, should I get off at this exit or should I try to gut it out and see if the traffic clears up or should I do that? Because you didn't have a car, you didn't have traffic, you didn't have ice cream, you didn't have any of that stuff, which some people would miss, I'm sure, and some of us would just love it if it were just back to the way it was when we were cavemen. But the, the truth is we are not equipped for this. We're not equipped to have all of these choices and to have all of this, uh, this difficulty, which is why we suck at it. It's why we're so bad at committing to something. It's why we're so bad at being able to make those split-second decisions. And it is really something that, you know, if, if we are able to simplify things we will find that we're much more successful at it. This is like what I was talking about at the end of the last class, where you're trying to learn a technique or a sequence of techniques that's very complicated, it's very difficult because there are all of these steps that you need to take, but uh, the reason that we are bad in that moment is because our brains are kind of trying to get ahead of the moment. We're like skipping ahead to what's next. You know, when you're doing a combination that's like hook, punch, uppercut, elbow strike, and you messed up the last elbow strike, and then it's time for the next count, and you're thinking about how you messed up the elbow strike, or you're worried about what am I gonna do when it comes to the elbow strike, well then your hook punch is bad, and your uppercut is bad, and probably your elbow strike is also gonna be bad. So 
you got to be able to focus on one thing at a time. And in a situation like this, you're usually just going to focus on the first thing. And if everything is set up correctly, then the first thing you're focusing on is the hook punch. But that presupposes that you set your fighting stance right, you know, or in a drill with an actual partner, that's like I got my distance right. And this is a, a really important thing to practice, this, uh, this act of just focusing on the first thing. Because we can really only do one thing at a time, we can really only focus on one thing at a time. And, and our practice teaches us this, sometimes by, uh, by reinforcing negatively with pain when we're, when we're up in our head trying to think of too many things at once. So we recognize that we're getting overwhelmed and you just focus on one thing. And you keep focusing on that one thing until you get it, and then you move on to the next thing. So uh, this, is, this is the part where kind of everything breaks down, because we're up in our head at the wrong place in the process. And the other thing that I talked about in the blog was when I used to play tennis in, in high school, and I was like an okay tennis player. Um, we, we played at a pretty high level at my school and I was like the worst kid on the, the varsity team, but I, but I made it. And so when we got to uh, the state competition at the end, the, the big tournament at the end of the year, we were playing some kids who are, who are better and some kids that are worse, but the pressure got to me. And it was actually, it was more or less like this all year, but I felt it like to the, to the absolute worst, heaviest degree during this tournament. And I remember I'm playing doubles. So I have me and I have my teammate and we're both not great, but it's my turn to serve. And this is what I did almost every single time. Toss the ball up and I serve and it, and it goes into the net the first time. About half of the time, my serve would go into the net. And then I would, then I would put myself through hell because then I would say, oh my God, I'm gonna double fault. I'm gonna send the second one into the net. And I'm thinking about, I'm gonna double fault. I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna screw this up. And sure enough, when your brain is telling you that you're about to screw something up, you screw it up. So that's what I did. And it got to the point where I just, the only way that I could get the second serve over the net was just to like lob it over. And then the other team would just come in and, and crush me with it. Uh, and so we lost. <laughs> but the, it was an interesting thing because I, I recognize, you know, how silly this was more so now when I look back on it. And it's, it's kind of through the prism of martial arts that I recognize what was going on. Because I've kind of been through it in martial arts and gotten to the other side of it. Where I got good at... Uh, letting go of those thoughts, those uh, second guessing thoughts that kind of led me to choke when I was serving in tennis. And at the time, if I had recognized this, I'm sure I would, I'd be a professional tennis player by now. But I, I looking back now, realize that this is the same kind of breakdown in the process where I wasn't in the moment. I was thinking about uh, I screwed up the last serve. I'm visualizing in my mind, this is what I did last time. I screwed it up. You screwed it up again. You screwed it up like you did the last 20 times. You're an idiot. Everyone's watching. And, and then I would go from that to, oh, it's time for me to serve again. You're about to do it again. You're about to do the same thing that you just did. You're about to send it into the net again. And like my head is, is actually saying this. And you guys have had this experience with, with something in your life, maybe not tennis, probably martial arts, and probably lots of other stuff, where you're just like repeating the same stupid tape that is uh, not helpful. It's, it's taking you only in the negative direction that you don't want to go. And that is on some level just a function of not being mindful and in the moment, right? When we're in the moment, we're not thinking about what we just did and we're not thinking what we're about to do or what could happen, we're just here, you know? So in practice, we use the breath all the time and this could have worked in tennis for sure. I could have just focused on, you know, before I'm serving, just focus on bouncing the ball. This is what you see uh, NBA players do when they're, when they're taking a free throw shot where they, you know, every, every player kind of has a, a little routine that they do. 
So I used to watch the, uh, the Pistons in Detroit, and I forget who this was. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Chauncey Billups. It was somebody who was really good. And he would go like two bounces in front, one bounce off to the side, and then make the shot. And he was like super high percentage uh, free throw shooter. And the best players in any sport at the highest level and in martial arts are the ones that have not only perfected the physical uh, skill set, which is necessary, but then have gone to perfect their mental game and have gotten to the point where they no longer choke or hardly ever choke. And so these huge plays that happen at the end of the game, you know, the, 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 the game-winning shot, that's done by the people who don't choke. And there might be people who are slightly more skilled in this way or that way, but it's, it's that, that uh, ice water in your veins where you just stay totally cool in that moment that allows you to perform when it's a really high pressure situation. And so back to the free throw idea where you have the, uh, you have the ritual of I'm bouncing it this many times or I'm spinning it this way or whatever it is that I do. I've practiced that over and over again and then go right into the shot. Uh, it's the focusing on that ritual that gets your mind out of that, I'm about to screw this up, I'm about to lose the game, I'm about to do this or that. So focusing on this physical activity can help. Focusing on the breath, as I talk about, help that gets us in the moment. And in the moment, our mind is just here, totally focused. So you don't always have that option. For example, in practice, if you're sparring, you don't have, it, you don't have the option to you know, dribble a basketball. Uh, or even, you can't all the time just take a deep breath because sometimes the punch is coming too fast for you to breathe. But you kind of have this, this uh, overarching ritual of being in the dojo and I've bowed in and I'm you know, wearing my uniform and I'm in a place that I've been to before and I can just focus on that, like whatever it is that's leading up to the moment. So the, you know, the funny part of the, the talk and the article is about choking and, and how it happens and that's something that we can all relate to. But what we can't all relate to is how to deal with that and be able to get beyond it. So this is the, the kind of method or this is the, uh, the way that we want to deal with it. So meditation helps because we can keep ourselves calm more regularly, but it's also reprogramming our mind. So meditation is on some level the act of reprogramming our mind to go back to the breath. And that means that when we recognize that we're having a thought, then we have the ability to let it go, come back to the breath. And when you're about to choke, you want to do the same thing. You recognize that you're having the thought, and then you come back to the moment, whether it's the breath or the physical thing that you're doing, whatever it is. So that's huge. We want to be able to practice, sometimes in class we, we literally just slow it down, right? So your partner is swinging the stick at you, and if they're going too fast, they're gonna hit you every time, and, and it's not even a matter of, of whether you're overwhelmed or not. You just don't have the, the physical skill set to move out of the way and not get hit. So then your partner slows it down. And you're actually reprogramming your mind and your body to respond to this, right? It's coming, and then you get yourself to move the right way. And then it comes again, and you get yourself to move the right way. And there, there's no shortcut for this. This is, a, this is a source of frustration for a lot of people early on, and we have some beginners here where you guys have recognized this, you've recognized this in, in what we're working on this week, but in anything that we do, where it's like, I feel like I should be able to do this already. It's a simple enough thing, but I, I can't get myself to do this. And I'm looking around the room and I see everybody else is doing it. How come I can't do it? It's because you're a bad human being. No, it's because you have not done it enough times. And you know, you don't want to compare yourself to other people because some of you, it will take a hundred times to be able to do this consistently. It will take some of you a thousand times to be able to do this consistently, but it will happen. This, this process works. It has worked for, for many people who are much more awful at martial arts than you. 
and you got to trust in that. So when you're able to just ask your partner, can you slow this down? You know, this is, this is uh, letting your ego get out of the equation because your ego wants you to be able to do it fast. No, do it again. No, do it again. And when you can set your ego aside, that's also going to help you not choke because your, your ego is really the thing that is causing you to choke. The ego is the thing that is so afraid of you messing up. The ego is the thing that's so attached to how you already messed up or how you're going to mess up in the future. So uh, the same types of things, you know, focusing on the physical movement, focusing on your breath, meditation, all that uh, allows us to let go of that, allows the ego to no longer be in charge. And so then we're in this place where uh, we're, just, we're just being. We're just here, present. And in that state, there is no choking. Now, we think of this like, oh, I got into Mu Shin and then I'm just going to stay there for the rest of class. That will probably never happen. I mean, ever. But what will happen is you find yourself in this good mental state where uh, you're not attached and you're not in the ego and you can just be there ready for it and you're not about to choke. And you might be there for like a second. And that, and that one swing came and you got out of the way and you went, hey, that went pretty well. I didn't have to think about it. I just did it. That was nice. And as soon as you start celebrating in your mind, then you're back in the ego because you're like, hey, I'm getting pretty good at this stuff, martial arts. I hope Sifu saw me. We just been watching. And then while you're looking for me, then they hit you with a stick the second time. So uh, this, this is part of the same process, right? We are able to be in that moment for a moment and it's like a split second or a half of a breath in in meditation you recognize that it's 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 less than half of a breath often but then we just lengthen that amount of time and it is uh by being unattached to these distractions it's just by by focusing on what's happening right now that that amount of time that we're in the moment that we are in mushin and therefore not going to choke we just get that to last as long as possible. And it might go to an entire breath. It might go to an entire minute with lots of practice where you're in, you're in a drill that is really causing you to stay engaged. And this is one of the best things about our practice. The physical practice is so dangerous and scary that if you don't stay in the moment, you get hurt. Now, you're not going to get seriously hurt, especially in the beginner class, but you know, you're going to feel the pain of getting hit in the head with a padded stick or you're going to feel the pain of, I moved the wrong way and it's embarrassing. But uh, it, happens, it happens so fast that you cannot allow your mind to wander. And so when we're, when we're in class and we're practicing that, and it's like, I can't let it wander for a second. got to bring it right back. And it goes this way. i got to bring it right back. That is, that is the, the reprogramming. That is the act. That's the thing that we're practicing that helps us uh, not to choke and to be in the moment, to be present. So when we sit to meditate tonight, this is your not, your not choking practice. And it's, it's just simply the, the practice of recognizing when your mind wanders and it might wander to a, a chain of thoughts that would psych you out. You know, like I used to do when I was a kid and I'd see the pill and I would go, I'm gonna choke, I'm gonna choke, I'm gonna choke. Uh, it's recognizing that and just letting it go. And you let it go, not by saying to yourself, stop having that thought. You know, you have this, this terrible thought, and then you say, stop having that thought, and then your brain is like this. It's, your, your brain is beating itself up, and that is not the kind of experience that we want. We want the experience which is, I have this negative thought, and then I just let it keep going, and it just disappears. So... We, we are unattached to it and we're not resisting it. So uh, that's all I have to say. Sit comfortably. <laughs>